Welcome to Queen of the Ring, a podcast that wants to talk to you about wrestling. My name is Alexa. Kagetsu is a badass, high-flying, strong, compassionate, and incredible wrestler. She was once an underdog and is now regarded as one of the best wrestlers in the whole world. And she is incredibly underappreciated for her abilities outside of Japan. And I want to talk about her because she is one of the most captivating wrestlers I've ever watched. On June 24th, 1994, Yukari Ishino was born in Setsu, Osaka, Japan. I really can't find too much about her childhood, um, but one interview I saw on Yahoo Japan, she says that she played Little League as a kid and she loves baseball to this day. She started becoming interested in in Joshi wrestling when she went to Sendai Girls School Wrestling in her hometown in Osaka. She was incredibly impressed by the strength and the agility of the women performing, but she was like incredibly and specifically amazed by Miko Satomura, who was already a legend by this time. Um, She began her career in the 90s um, when Japanese women's wrestling was really booming. Um, She's been signed to WWE at different times um, in in her career, but she started at WCW in, I think, 95. But now, I believe she's wrestling at NXT UK, or at least she was until very recently. Apparently, like so many others, right after she right after she decided this, she planned on beginning her training immediately after she finished junior high school, and she skipped high school completely. Y- you only need to finish middle school to become a trainee. Um, and I guess this is really common in a lot of Joshi schools. So when she was able, she trained for six months, and she debuted on August 24th, 2008, under her real name, Yukari Ashino, and she was 14 at that time. After her debut, though, she spent about a year losing matches to everybody, unless she was teamed up in a tag team with some bigger name in wrestling, like maybe like Miko Satomura. And she only really got her first win in a match in 2009, but even after that, you know, she continued losing a lot of matches back to back, and it was very dis- discouraging for her. In 2010, she decided that she was going to be changing her name to Kagetsu. And then only a year later, she won her first championship, the JWP championship. Um, and in that same year, she lost a really big match to Asuka, who was an incredibly famous WWE superstar. After leaving Sendai, she expected to have a more success as a freelancer since she felt like she was being held back by them for so long. Um, And she says later in an interview that she did not look at the time at Sendai very fondly. She speaks in an interview about this time in her career where she was a freelancer um, and she was going up against you know, big names like Io Shirai for her World of Stardom belt and Hiroro Matsumoto for a different major single belt. And she was so excited to have the opportunity for two belts in two different promotions. She was really confident but with how everything was panning out. You know, she would have a real chance at winning these two belts from two separate promotions. But although, like, she says that she put in more to those matches than she ever had before, but she didn't win either of them. In 2016, she began working with Stardom still as a freelancer and was like not super crazy about the promotion, but eventually she says that she recognized their spirit and and determination and that she held a certain respect for them. Although at this time, you know, it is the same time that she was feeling really dejected and, you know, these feelings weren't pushing her to keep working. So she ultimately announced that she was going to take a break. And she says that during this break, she ended up really thinking about who she was and who she wanted to be. She was aware about this anger that had happened with those who were her teachers and her mentors and how they didn't give her any opportunities. And she describes this part of herself that was 
always talking about the clash of the generations, the changing of the guard, and saying that she was, quote, entirely focused on what was above me. But I realized no matter how hard you try, you cannot cause a generational shift all by yourself. It's pointless if you don't lift up those below you as well. To fast forward for a second, in 2017, Kagetsu put on a promotion where she had planned to announce her retirement from professional wrestling. The final match was between she and Io Shirai, who apparently had heard of Kagetsu's plans earlier in the day, and before she got a chance to announce it, Io grabbed the mic and was just like, please don't go. You bring so much to professional wrestling, and you still have so much more to give. I know it. In April of 2016, Kigetsu took over for a group within Stardom as the leader of the group. This group is known as Oedo Tai, and it's a heel faction in Stardom. The group is known for humiliating their opponents and like having possessing a severe viciousness in the ring. The name Oedo Tai, from what I have seen, basically translates to mean Edo. Edo was Tokyo's original name in feudal Japan in the medieval era. And, you know, like when you think of samurais, that's when they existed. And the capital's name was only changed to Tokyo in like the 1860s, I believe. The heel faction was named this by Act Yasukawa, who was a part of this really infamous incident and was brutally attacked in stardom. And I will definitely be talking about her story at another time. But she was a really big nerd, and she was very into this time period, and that's basically where the name came from. Although the lines are a little bit more blurred between faces and heels in Japanese wrestling than they are in other parts of the world, Kagetsu stands out as like this absolute vicious villain. She battles her pr- opponents brutally, spitting mist in their eyes when an opportunity arises, blinding them. And she's also known for being able to receive extreme damage in the ring. And if you watch some of her matches, it's insane as you watch her be kicked in the back of the head and continue laughing. Through her heel character, she pushed all of the women around her to be better wrestlers. She was always known for taking the younger girls in and showing them how to grow. And I imagine partly because of this, she became the head coach in 2019 for the starting girls at Stardom and became invested in helping their careers expand the way hers had. She took over for the long time and beloved trainer and general manager Fuka because she had just gotten pregnant. And through all of her opportunities, she constantly helped others become parts of storylines, get screen time, be in the spotlight, cut promos and more. She became within stardom a two-time artist of stardom champion, a two-time goddess of stardom champion, and a one-time world of stardom championship. In 2018, Pro Wrestling Illustrated listed her as number 18 in the top 100 wrestlers in the world. Slowly, she started to back up even more and give the girls around her even more of a chance, continuing to offer her support as a popular Joshi wrestler, you know, giving them all the chances to advance ahead of her. I must mention some of the more incredible and vicious things I have seen from this woman in the ring. There is a clip of her hitting Io Shirai with an exploding barbed wire bat that is insane. It will literally blow your mind as it blows Io's right off. Another particularly vicious match is one between she and Mayu Iwatani, who is the ultimate babyface within the stardom brand, where... Kagetsu repeatedly, three times to be specific, hung Mayu by her neck over the edge of the stadium seating, ultimately dropping her into the crowd below, and then when walking down to her, continuing laughing, proceeds to push her down a set of stairs. Really, you should just go watch the matches, because they are incredible and the words don't do them justice, you must see it. Unfortunately, in December of 2019, Kagetsu announced that she would be retiring the following February, just a year, almost just a year ago. Her last match was February 24th, 2020, taking on the whole roster of stardom. All of the matches are a minute time limit, and she goes through like 12 or 13 women, one by one, until she's beaten at the very end. It's a really incredible match, and it's available on YouTube. She's like a monster to her first defo- opponent, forcing her to drop kick her over and over and over and over while Kagetsu just screams for more. And that's how the match keeps going until the end, and she's beaten. 
I can't speak to Japanese wrestling as much as I can towards American wrestling, if I can at all there too. But the kindness and support Kagetsu offers to the women around her, I think is lovely. Through her retirement match, you can tell how much space she is leaving for the women that she is wrestling. The women who are still going to be there before she leaves. When I look at her whole career as someone who's just been reading things and watching her and is a big fan, I feel like it's defined by two parts. You know, the first being held back and discarded and fighting and fighting and fighting for the respect that she knew she deserved. And then the second, when she finally got that respect, doing the exact opposite to those who were younger and trying to do what she was doing. She put everybody over. Since retiring, she's kind of expressed that she's just trying to disappear from the public. And I get that. So after doing all this research, I'll let her do so. If you happen to make it this far, I want to say thank you so much for listening. Queen of the Ring was written by me, Alexa Pruitt. The music is by Kreider Dane of Helter Skelter Music Productions. If you liked what you hear, join me next week.